Hello, my friends, and welcome to another week of inspiration brought to you by our friends from IFPC. My name is John O'Leary, and our friend Nelson Mandela spent 27 years behind bars, a political prisoner in South Africa. After being released, he worked to reunify his nation. And one of my favorite quotes from Nelson Mandela is that being resentful is like drinking poison and then waiting for the other person to die. It's a powerful quote. Being resentful is like drinking poison and then waiting for the other person to die. So my question to you on this Monday morning as we step into this week, as we move into December and get ready to step into the new year is how long should we remain mad? How long should we stay angry at something, somebody? How long should we remain resentful? It's a question we have to wrestle with in relationship. We get to wrestle with in our lives. How long should we stay a victim to our circumstances or to the behavior of somebody else, the way we feel self-injured? by their words, their activity, their actions in our lives. How long? I was reading a book called Ragman recently, and Ragman, this guy's writing about his wife and their early uh, marriage, and he says, gosh, I used to be so prideful. I used to be so hot-headed that every time we would have any even little disagreement, I would just go off the edge. I would grab my jacket, walk outside, slam the door shut, and walk around the neighborhood until I proved my, t my point to her until I sure showed her that she was wrong and I was in the right. Then he'd come home. He, he was uh, alleviated somehow when he came back through that front door. Well, on one occasion, he grabs his jacket, he moves toward the door, he slams it behind him, but the jacket gets caught in the door jam. So now he's outside, it's freezing cold, it's raining on top of him. He can't move. He's, a, he's trapped. He's trapped. He's got two choices as I see it. One, he can slip off this arm, this arm, and walk off into a freezing, cold, rainy evening, victorious, proving himself once again. Or he can turn around, swallow his pride, ring that doorbell, and wait for her to come and free him from that prison. Which one would you do? Would you take off the jacket, walk outside and prove your point or put your tail between your legs, swallow your pride and ring that bell? Walter chose the second option. He rang the bell. He watches like this, like a little owl as the wife approaches because he's trapped in the doorway. She's got a frown on her face until she sees him. And then she begins to slowly understand what has happened here. So that frown slowly turns into a grin and then a laugh. And then she opens up the door. She welcomes her husband out of the rain. And that's the end of the fight. It's over, right? Reunification, man. Reconciliation. Love. Love wins. This is good news. Except as Walter looked back like this, even though the door had been opened, even though the house was warm and inviting, even though his wife was smiling and encouraging him to step back out of the rain, he hadn't proved his point yet. He was still resentful, still angry, still mad. And so I wanted to read to you today exactly what he wrote. He said, readers, that's you and me. In that moment, I could simply have laughed with her. And humor would have provided the bridge to reconciliation. But I refused to do so. I gathered up my coat and I walked into that rainy, freezing evening. A prisoner of my own refusal to laugh my friends, how long are we going to refuse to laugh? How long are we going to refuse to step back into that house? How long are we going to remain in the cold, in the rain, arms like this, angry, fists clenched, trying to prove the point? I don't know in what parts of your life you need to come back into the house, step out of that rain, stop being a victim to circumstances. But I think as we evaluate our lives, there are areas that we can choose rather than walking into the cold, rainy evening to take the jacket off, to come back into the house, to wrap our arms around our loved ones, and to recognize that when we choose to remain a victim to our circumstances, when we choose to remain resentful, we are also choosing to drink poison and waiting for the other person to die. But it is only you and I who are getting more sick. So let's get healthy. Let's choose to set down that poison. Let's choose to take off that jacket. Let's choose to come back into the house. And let's choose forgiveness and reconciliation today. I think it's important in our relationships at home. I think it's valuable in the relationships we have with our coworkers and our vendors. And I think it's critical as we step back forward together as a nation, one nation, one nation, as we step back forward together. So my friends, for this time, 
And until next time, my name is John O'Leary, and this is your day. Choose forgiveness, choose reconciliation, and choose to live inspired. I'll see you next week.